Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with John O'Donnell of Yield Hub. He's going to talk today about using data, and in particular, large quantities of data for yield management and also reliability in semiconductors. So, John, we've got lots of data these days, more than we've ever had before coming out of the fab, out of the uh, uh, devices themselves. What do we do with this? Yes, Ed, we do. We're getting uh, huge amounts of data far more than ever before. Um, and the technology is there to deal with that type of volume with the gigabytes per month type of data. And uh, the technology wasn't there a few years ago, but now it's there to manage the data in terms of quality, clean, the clean cleanliness of the data, uh, linking up the data uh, that would not have been possible before. The compute power is there on the servers or in, and in the cloud to allow to hand, us to handle that kind of data to really provide uh, information in real time to the user. Um, so yes, the data volumes are up, um, but that doesn't mean the quality of the data it hasn't matched it with solutions like Yielco. Let's drill down into this. So John, what are we looking at? So we're, we're looking at, um, what we're looking at is we have volumes of data every day coming in from final test, wafer sort, what, potentially other sources of data as well from MES ERP systems. So these, these, this data is coming in at very high volume every day into a central server, which could be in the cloud or it could be on premise. Okay, so this data is no good unless it's, it's high quality. So the decisions made by the engineers are worth it and, and good decisions. Um, so they, it arrives at high volume. You need to clean the data here on the way in and also link it up across manufacturing. So these sources of data are no longer silos. They're linked up. And the value of linking them up is that you can see correlations from what right through the final test. But to be able to do this in real time, extremely fast, and without uh, somebody being involved. So this is done by the, the servers. Um, the value of that is that you now have a clean source of data which is linked up right across manufacturing. So this helps in areas such as traceability, um, yield improvement, and ultimately quality. Does it help if the data is clean from the start? Does it all have to be consistent? Because one of the problems that you have with all this data is you've got data coming in from different sources. You've got vibration, temperature, you've got uh, all these different uh, parameters that go on inside a chamber. And now you have to figure out, does this stuff work together? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does help if the data is consistent and clean at the start, but any system like Yieldtop should allow uh, an engineer to be able to clean the data afterwards as well. If, if the data is of a consistent format, it makes cleaning the data a lot easier. Um, there are rules which need to be followed maybe uh, at the operations level in the factory to ensure the, that the data can be cleaned and consolidated later on. Um, but uh, at, at, you always have to allow for mistakes which can be fixed by an engineer who knows the products very well. So what you're doing here is taking a lot of data and adding a level and machine learning and adding a level of domain expertise into this that is separate as well, right? Yes, and indeed, um, there is another dimension which I need to mention as well. So down here we have, um, it's very important that engineers and experts also add their knowledge to the system. Okay, so um, you commenting on data, um, uploading documents which might, have, such as data sheets, etc., to the system. So context, contextual data related to the products should be uploadable and should be uh, part of the system for the best decisions to be made. And to keep the, um, to keep the, and the ability to keep that knowledge online and available for the next time there might be a problem of similar nature that happens right now. So if there is if a problem, if something is uh, spotted here by an engineer or by the system here automatically, be it machine learning or whatever or human, um, 
that you need the system needs to um, facilitate uh, the the learning of that. Um, so, so the next time a problem arises of a similar nature, that it's fixed far more efficiently. So the knowledge coming in and being able to comment and add knowledge that's retained in the system is critical for more efficient, more and more efficient analysis and solutions to yield and reliability down the line. Okay, so this is where this is commenting, um, uploading documents, uploading images, all tied in contextually to different problems that have been solved. That's that's really critical. What, what happens when you get multiple chips in a package? So now it's no longer just a single chip that you have to worry about. It's also how they're put together in a package. It's the, uh, uh, each one may have been developed on a completely different process. Absolutely, completely different process. In some cases, a different foundry. And uh, so the linking up the data here, uh, linking say from, uh, from the package, which might multi-die package to the right what data, is critical and that's supported in the system like you talked. So you can correlate the performance of one of the die versus uh, the right fab data. Yeah. And when you're looking at data, um, things that can cause issues on a single chip, as you start putting together multiple chips, now, now you have the potential for additive type of effects too that can affect reliability and also yield, right? Yeah, absolutely. and. Uh, a system should also allow that correlation of the test performance within the within the package to be um, to be uh, analyzed. So, uh, you know, the, the the test performance of chip A, how that might influence the performance of chip B within the same package is very important. And then relating also back to the, the correct uh, uh, way of talking fab data that might be linked up. So absolutely, one chip may have an effect, but you need to have that in the, your, your analysis system to be able to cover that. We're finding that the quality requirements of uh, industries other than automotive are being influenced by automotive, um, and that more and more the reliability of chips will be uh, very close to automotive, even though not automotive, uh, end, mar end market for those chips. So uh, yeah, automotive has been a driver for higher reliability, and we're seeing, we're seeing requirements from our customers to include um, outlier detection and, and um, quality improvement uh, that is definitely coming from the automotive uh, sector or automotive requirements in the past. Yeah. So traceability has come in primarily from what is it? I said two six two six two has driven a lot of this, semis behind this in a, uh, an industry-wide type of uh, uh, standard where they're trying to get some, some single device traceability. How does that fit into this picture? Yeah, so the data coming in on this side, especially for, say, for final test with the SART, allows a unique code to be assigned to each die, okay? And that unique code is stored on, on a database system like Yieldtop, if there is a customer return in a few years' time, that code will allow us to identify exactly how that chip behaved in manufacturing. And not only that, also identify chips that behave similarly to the problem chip in manufacturing throughout the manufacturing of that product. So then you're not only do you have the uh, information on maybe why that failed and that you can improve your, your reliability part of your process, but also um, you'll be able to maybe do further uh, investigation uh, of, of where potentially unreliable die have been uh, inserted into systems. So it gives you more, um, so a system like this should be able to really help you solve reliability problems. This goes beyond just automotive, right? So once we get all these yeah. these ideas in place, once we can establish all the data, now we can use this to start adding reliability into a lot of other chips, even those not developed at the most advanced nodes. Yeah, absolutely, and we're seeing a big uh, growth in storing unique IDs on each chip, um, and not and these chips are not destined for automotive. 
many of these. So we're seeing for a lot of customers that they're storing unique IDs, uh, they're the, the fuses onto chips. And, and it, that also allows you to recreate um, wafer maps in final test. Okay, typically final test, you can't create something like this, but the, the, the current trend is to, is to allow you to recreate wafer maps in final test. And this allows you to uh, maybe do further root cause analysis of reliability that may be related to where the uh, chip was on the um, on the wafer. Uh, and the reason is that the testing and final test can be far far more expensive often than you would you would have in wafer sort. So uh, being able to redraw or, or to, to uh, create a wafer version of your final test data is. is is something that's going to be very beneficial uh, for our customers. John O'Donnell, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.